Let's see the arterial tree of the human body. Aorta arises from the left ventricle as aortic root, then forms the ascending aorta, continues as aortic arch, then continues as descending thoracic aorta. The arch of aorta has three branches, brachiocephalic trunk dividing into right common carotid, and right subclavian artery, the other two arch branches are left common carotid, and left subclavian artery. But the first branches are the coronary arteries. Let's for a moment remove the descending thoracic aorta to see about coronary arteries. Right coronary artery courses along the atrioventricular groove. It gives rises to posterior descending artery and posterolateral ventricular branches. It also gives acute marginal branches. The left main artery bifurcates into left anterior descending and circumflex arteries. Left anterior descending artery gives rise to septal and diagonal branches. The circumflex artery gives rise to obtuse marginal branches. Let's see the arterial supply of upper limb. The subclavian artery is divided into three parts by scalenous anterior muscle. The first part gives rise to three branches, internal thoracic artery, vertebral artery, and thyrocervical trunk. Thyrocervical trunk gives off three branches, suprascapular artery, inferior thyroid artery, and transverse cervical artery. Second part gives rise to costa cervical trunk, which splits into superior intercostal and deep cervical artery. The third part gives rise to dorsal scapular artery. The subclavian artery continues as axillary artery, from the outer border of the first rib. It is divided into three parts by pectoralis minor muscle. The first part gives rise to one branch called superior thoracic artery. The second part gives rise to two branches, thoracoacromian artery, and lateral thoracic artery. Thoracoacromian artery splits into four branches, pectoral, acromial, clavicular, and deltoid. The third part of axillary artery gives rise to three branches. Subscapular artery, posterior humeral circumflex artery, and anterior humeral circumflex artery. The axillary artery continues as brachial artery from the lower border of teres major muscle. The brachial artery terminates into radial and ulnar arteries. It gives rise to profunda brachii artery, superior and inferior ulnar collateral arteries. The radial artery gives rise to radial recurrent artery and superficial palmar branch. The ulnar artery gives rise to anterior and posterior ulnar recurrent arteries, common interosseous artery which gives rise to the anterior, posterior, and recurrent interosseous arteries. The ulna artery at the wrist divides into superficial and deep branch. The superficial branch forms the superficial palmar arch, which gives rise to four common digital palmar arteries, which in turn gives rise to proper palmar digital arteries. The radial artery continues as deep palmar arch, and anastomosis with deep branch of ulna artery. The deep palmar arch gives rise to princeps pollicis artery and radialis indicis artery. Let's see the arterial tree of head and neck. The common carotid artery divides into external and internal carotid arteries. The external carotid artery terminates into superficial temporal and maxillary arteries. The anterior branches are superior thyroid artery, lingual artery, and facial artery. The medial or deep branch is ascending pharyngeal artery, and the two posterior branches are occipital and posterior auricular arteries. The internal carotid artery has no branches in the cervical part. The petros, cavernous, and cerebral part gives rises to many branches, the important ones are discussed here. The internal carotid artery divides to form the middle cerebral artery, and anterior cerebral artery. It also gives rise to posterior communicating artery, the ophthalmic artery, and anterior choroidal artery. Inside the skull, the two vertebral arteries join to form the basilar artery at the base of the pons. 
The basilar artery is the main blood supply to the brainstem and connects to the circle of Willis, to potentially supply the rest of the brain if there is compromise to one of the carotids. Vertebral artery gives rise to the anterior spinal artery. The basilar artery gives rise to anterior inferior cerebellar artery, superior cerebellar artery, and divides into posterior cerebral arteries. It also gives paromedian pontine branches. Let's now complete the circle of Willis. Let's see the branches of descending thoracic aorta. The coronary arteries, are temporarily hidden to visualize the descending thoracic aorta. The descending aorta starts at the level of the fourth thoracic vertebral body, as the continuation of the aortic arch. It exits the thorax by continuing as the abdominal aorta, as it crosses the aortic hiatus, in the diaphragm, at the level of the twelfth thoracic vertebra. It gives rise to nine pairs, of posterior intercostal arteries, of 3rd, to 11th intercostal spaces. It also gives a pair of subcostal artery, and a pair of superior phrenic artery. The first and second intercostal arteries arise from the superior intercostal artery, which is a branch of costa cervical trunk of subclavian artery. The other branches of descending thoracic aorta are esophageal, mediastinal, and bronchial arteries. There are two bronchial arteries on the left and one on the right. Let's see the abdominal aortic branches. Abdominal aorta is continuation of descending thoracic aorta, from the aortic hiatus. It extends till the bifurcation into common iliac arteries. First we will see the five, paired lateral abdominal wall branches, inferior phrenic artery, and four lumbar arteries. Next we'll see the three paired lateral visceral branches, middle suprarenal artery, renal artery, and gonadal arteries, testicular arteries in male, and ovarian artery in females. The inferior phrenic artery gives rise to superior suprarenal artery, and renal artery gives rise to inferior suprarenal arteries. We'll hide the above branches to see the three three single anterior visceral branches, celiac trunk, superior and inferior mesenteric arteries. Celiac trunk arises at the level of 12th thoracic vertebra. The celiac artery supplies blood to the liver, stomach, abdominal esophagus, spleen, and the superior half of both the duodenum and the pancreas. These structures correspond to the embryonic foregut. It divides into common hepatic, splenic, and left gastric arteries. Left gastric artery gives gastric and esophageal branches. Splenic artery gives pancreatic, splenic, short gastric, and left gastroepiploic arteries. Common hepatic artery branches into proper hepatic artery, gastroduodenal, and right gastric arteries. Proper hepatic artery divides into left and right hepatic arteries. Right hepatic artery gives cystic artery. Gastroduodenal artery divides into superior pancreaticoduodenal artery and right gastroepiploic artery. Right gastric artery runs along the lesser curvature of the stomach. Superior mesenteric artery arises at the level of first lumbar vertebra. It supplies the intestine from the lower part of the duodenum through two-thirds of the transverse colon, as well as the pancreas. These structures corresponds to the embryonic midgut. It gives rise to inferior pancreaticoduodenal artery, jejunal arteries, ileal arteries, iliocolic arteries, right colic, and middle colic arteries. Iliocolic artery gives rise to anterior and posterior cecal arteries. A pendicular branch arises from posterior cecal artery. Inferior mesenteric artery arises at the level of third lumbar vertebra. 
The territory of distribution of the IMA is equivalent to the embryonic hindgut. That is, it supplies the large intestine from splenic flexure to the upper part of the rectum, which includes the descending colon, and the sigmoid colon. It gives rise to left colic artery, sigmoid arteries, and it continues as superior rectal artery. The median sacral artery is a small single posterior branch of the distal abdominal aorta. The common iliac artery divides into external and internal iliac arteries. The external iliac artery passes beneath the inguinal ligament and becomes the common femoral artery. External iliac artery gives rise to inferior egogastric and deep circumflex iliac arteries. These vessels supply blood to the muscles and skin in the lower abdominal wall. Internal iliac artery divides into anterior and posterior division. Posterior division gives rise to iliolumbar artery, lateral sacral artery, and superior gluteal artery. Anterior division gives rise to umbilical artery, and superior vesicular artery arises from it, in some people superior vesicular artery arises as a separate branch, other branches of anterior division are, obturator artery, inferior vesicular artery in male or vaginal artery in female, middle rectal artery, internal pudental artery and inferior gluteal artery. In females there is additional branch called uterine artery. The common femoral artery, is a continuation of the external iliac artery. It gives rise to superficial epigastric artery, superficial and deep external pudendal arteries, and superficial circumflex iliac artery. The common femoral artery continues as superficial femoral artery, after it gives off profunda femoris artery. Profunda femoris gives perforating branches, lateral and medial circumflex femoral arteries. The superficial femoral artery becomes popliteal artery after crossing the hiatus magnus. Before it crosses it gives off descending genicular artery. Popliteal artery courses through the popliteal fossa and ends at the lower border of the popliteus muscle, where it branches into the anterior tibial artery and tibioperoneal trunk. When the anterior tibial artery crosses the anterior aspect of the ankle joint, it becomes the dors alis pedis artery. Tibioperoneal trunk divides into posterior tibial artery and peroneal artery. Posterior tibial artery passes posterior to the medial malleolus. It is not lateral as depicted in the video. The posterior tibial artery gives rise to medial plantar and lateral plantar arteries. The lateral plantar artery joins with deep plantar branch of dors alis pedis artery to form the plantar arch. Let's complete the arterial system of left upper and lower limbs. Now let's see the whole arterial tree of the human body. Coronary arteries. Upper limb arteries. Head and neck arteries. Thoracic aorta arteries. Celiac axis, superior mesenteric artery, inferior mesenteric artery, lower limb arteries.